So this match is for the Southwest Heavyweight title. Dick Slater wearing the belt into the ring, and he hopes to wear it out. Bobby Duncombe is a Texan. Austin, Texas is his place of birth, and as he is a Texan, he feels like he should hold the Southwest area title. Slater is from Florida. Bobby Duncombe says he should go over and win the Southeast heavyweight title. The bell has not yet sounded. Now, Juan Reynosa is trying his best to at least make the rules heard. It's not always possible. Sometimes you think people never listen, but it's the referee's job to say what they are. Every referee has a different way of doing it. But in this moment, the 300 pounds of um, Bobby Duncombe are liable to pr prove a big obstacle for Dick Slater. Slater is trying to claim that he was thrown over the top rope. He would like to take this fall that fast on a technicality, but Juan Reynosa said, no way. Watch out for Duncan because Duncan has a reputation for being able to take people apart. But of course, for every dote, there's an antidote and on both sides. Dick Slater in a typical gesture. This is a pose or a position in which you'll often find him with his arms stretched out to the side almost as though he was going to take off like a great big bird. The twist on the wrist, Bob Duncan pours it to him, lays it in there, and you saw Slater, he's not going to be able to say that he was thrown over the top rope, although Reynosa at that time raised the question as far as the, the hold was concerned. It was actually a complete move by the Southwest Heavyweight Champion. A solo move that took him over the rope and onto, onto the apron. So... Slater must be doing some tall thinking. He's got to think tall to even come up close to Duncan. The call was for the break, and Duncan decided that maybe the best way to break would be to break his neck. He came over there with a good, solid wallop, but Slater, of course, tried to catch him completely unawares. This is a Slater style, to sneak up on the blind side, to do what he can about the about the little opportunities that come to you to get in on a man without getting in there the hard way. Side headlock, Duncan doing the grabbing. Duncan with that long arm of his wrapped around the head of Slater. And Dick caught, Dick is catching. On our side, we saw it, and Duncan is willing to swear that he is not doing anything illegal. He, he's not doing anything unpopular, that's for sure. Fans are willing to swear, and if the referee called for a vote, you'd hear a unanimous chorus here that would say that Duncan was doing something that he should be doing. Reynosa, watching closely, and Slater in that protective position on his knees, and that is a good offensive or defensive position in wrestling. Duncan's big right fist that time brought him down to the canvas. The, the Southwest champion prone but his head is being turned sideways 
and Duncan has that arm right underneath the ear, right smack under the ear. Here comes a call for a break. with a point of the elbow that time. It's Duncan on top, there's two. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Side headlock. Five minutes go by. This is the first fall of a two out of three fall match. And as Slater is caught, and Slater watches that fact that his shoulders are not close to that mat, Bobby Duncan leans in tight, keeps part of that weight on the body of Dick Slater. And Slater now tries to get into a position where he can take his head out of trouble. Duncan thrown off, but he held onto the hair of Dick Slater and was jerked right back into it. So Bobby Duncan pounds him. The referee now asks him if he pulled hair in order to regain that grip. And Duncan just looks a bright square in the eye in true Texas manner and denies every bit of it. So Slate is having his problems. Bobby Duncan trying to wear him down, leaning into him tight, heavily. And Reno says he moves from one side to the other. He was checking on the fact that it could have turned into a stranglehold, but now Slater is in a position where he can do something about it, but he's catching instead. And Bobby Duncan hauls off to lay it on the jaw. And on top is Bobby Duncan, close. The, the man with the hold gets that arm around the neck and gets it in there solidly. And the move by Slater with his legs is more to stave off inertia. You always want to be in a position where you can move in any direction. And there's no, no question about the fact that he might have to move in one direction or the other. <clears throat> so Slater is head caught and he could be slowly but surely fading out of this match. This, that's the way side headlocks work. They gradually drain you of the oxygen in your brain just slowly, slowly, and they I think he's in any condition to climb to a turnbuckle, but Bobby Duncan didn't care. He decided that if he didn't do anything, he was going to bounce him on that canvas and did. So Slater's on the floor, and Duncan's going to see that he gets back in that ring. On top is Duncan, close. Slater just barely oozed his way out of that position. Duncan again, side headlock, and Duncan lays it on there. So Duncan does it. He has been on top in all of the moves that took place in this match, and this is the way he wrestles. He uses that weight of his to advantage. He likes close contact. He likes holes that permit him to lean on a man. He likes holes that permit him to lie on a man, too. Just make, make the other fellow carry your weight. And 
Duncan, as he takes the front headlock, is aware that uh, Slater is moving into a better position. They'll call for the break now because Slater put his arms over that top rope. And there goes Slater, not only through, but off the apron on the floor and the cold, cold concrete of the Coliseum here. And Slater is on it. There you see him waiting, watching. And this is the first move that Slater has been able to make and characteristically, it's one in which he is able to sneak up on his opponent. He has dealt Bobby Duncan a crippling blow at the 10 minute mark and he is going to try to follow up on it. Duncan holding that left knee of his and well he might because having it wrapped around that turnbuckle is a great way to bust the leg or to make it feel like it's broken at least and Slater is in top position right now as he goes after the leg of Bobby Duncan and he's going to try the same thing he's after that turnbuckle he is maneuvering around now to snap it around the ring post again and that long leg of Bobby Duncan is now it could be impossible for him to stand on it and that is what Duncan what uh, Slater would like better than anything else and that is to put Bobby out of action Bobby has given him a drubbing here in the first 10 minutes and if he can keep him from wrestling anymore tonight he'll be in a position to to survive all of that punishment without much trouble. They're hollering for Bobby. You hear the chant, Bobby, Bobby. And Bobby is trying to fight his way clear, but well, he's after the, the leg. He was able to take that boot off and now he's able to hang on to the hole that much better. The spinning toe hole, the hole that the Funk family used to win the world's heavyweight title, both Terry and Dory, and right now, Southwest champion Dick, Dick Slater has won the first fall of this battle for the Southwest heavyweight title. We'll be back here in a moment after we have this word from the studio. Well, there are about 15 seconds left in the intermission period between the match, between the falls rather, and Bob Duncan has gotten Five, his boot back four, on and has three, just barely risen two, to his feet. One, uh, you seven, saw him as he used the ropes to get up to a standing position. And the strength of that leg can best be estimated by the fact that he's down on the canvas again. Dick Slater going after the leg of Bobby Duncan and dropping on it with his knee. Uh, oh, I'll tell you, that is a punishing hold. And of course, he specializes in punishing legs. Wrapping it around the ring post is one idea. Now he's using his head in there, right on the inside of the knee itself. And Bobby Duncan's in trouble. Slater came over there to plant his foot in there that time. And... Duncan may or may not survive this maneuver. And again, Dick Slater takes off that boot. And again, it's Dick Slater who takes it off for the purpose of uh, being able to better apply his toehold. But wait, we've got a fall. We've got a fall. Bobby Duncan won the equalizing fall in spectacular fashion. He caught Dick Slater with a clothesline, just ran right into him and knocked him off his feet when Duncan himself was having problems standing up. There's Dick Slater trying to shake the cobwebs out of his head and trying to get rid of those lights that flash and the bells that ring. 
and we are staying here between falls. There is only a one minute rest period and the 15 second mark has been called, but so far Bobby Duncan has managed to get his boot on. He's on his feet. He is moving around. He is waiting to get at Dick Slater. Now the bell will ring and as he sounds off of that bell, he is getting using his right leg and trying to do the same thing to Dick Slater to injure that uh, that leg. Slater is in some trouble, but I the leg is over the rope. He was close to the rope, and when you're close to the rope, oh man, I tell you, that's an uncomfortable feeling to have a knee like that driven right square in your face. That's why wrestlers' faces look the way they do. Crotch hold. A, Slam and it hurt Bobby Duncan's knee. He got the slam in there, but lifting up the 235 pounds of Dick Slater, but too much weight on that left side and the knee buckled up underneath him. Duncan limp limping around the ring and well, he was going for the drive into the turnbuckle and we've got a fall. We got a fall. We've got a winner. We We've got a winner and we've got a still Southwest champion. We've got Dick Slater, who has just chalked up a two out of three fall win over his bigger challenger. And Bobby Duncan is having a lot of trouble now as he still works on that leg and tries to get it going. But that's the way this one ends. And we tell you that we'll be back here in a moment as Dick Slater moves out of the ring carrying the Southwest heavyweight belt and we'll have this word from the studio.